Hi, Nick Collier here, and this is my shop. Come join me. We'll have some hey, fun. Well, Nick Collier here, and uh, we've got another project right here on the table. Uh, this guy called me, oh, I don't know, a week or so ago, and uh, he said that he, uh, he builds RC cars, scale modeled. And he's working on a fifth model car, and he keep, and this is the drive shaft for the car, and uh, you can see what happens to it. So he said, uh, "Can you build me another one of these, and uh, except thicker?" And I said, "I can do that." He says, "Build me two. I said, "Okay." So I'm going to build three because you know me, I'll fuck one of them up for sure. So, uh, hey, hang in there with me. We're going to have some uh, drive shaft fun today. Okay, uh, looking at the contour of this, he says, I don't need to put this little knurling on, on the end here, but that this ball shape and, of course, all of the uh, piercings that go in there are important because this is a universal joint. And we're going to go to the under, other end of the shaft. And the other end of the shaft pretty much has the same thing, except a little less complicated. This is the, the, uh, the uh, articulating side of the universal joint. So the, in a sense, the universal joint is where my fingers are connected to the motor or whatever it's connected to. This has got a little, I don't know if you can see it, a little set screw right there that holds this part in place. All right, so, uh, and we've got uh, some three-quarter material, and I did some checking around and, uh, and found out that uh, 4340 is the best material for drive shafts, so we're going to use that, and, uh, you know, and I got this from McMaster Carr, and they only had half-inch or three-quarter, and so, uh, and this is a five-eighths, uh, ball so we're gonna machine down this thing a little bit and go from there all right in order to get this contour I could put my uh, my um, radius tool on there I'm, I'm and I just might do that but let's try for a an easier approach possibly an easier approach let's go into our bits uh, drawer <laughs> and see if maybe I have something that already has a reasonable contour to it. Not there, that's for sure. And we'll kind of dig around in here. Let's see here. Let's It's an outside contour. <laughs> um, I, I think there's someplace in here, there's a whole drawer full of contour tools. But maybe not. Maybe that was a dream I had one night. Because you know how you always go looking for, for a special shape and of course you never have it. Well, that might just be the case here. That's kind of. I'm not seeing. That's a nice tool, though. I'll have to remember that one. Let's see. If maybe back here and back. There's something, but it's way too big. And here's something. Nah, nah, not so much. I think we may just have to grind one. Now the question is, is what are we going to use to grind it with? I don't, I don't want to start with a brand new one. All right, there might be 
what we're looking for. Well, one thing is we will end up with a contour tool. That's not too bad there. Hmm. So we could cut it here and then rotate it around and cut it like this. And then just shape that back into play. Well, problem is, is we're talking about 4340 and this thing is just really thin right there. So I'm thinking we're going to have to go in and grind ourselves a tool. But, you know, that's what happens. Well, well up on closer inspection, notice we've got one radius here or one ball shape here, which is Mm, five eight seven five or so and this one is about an eighth of an inch smaller so that's not going to work because we're going to have to be grinding two drill bits or i mean uh, lathe bits so forget that noise we're going to put this aside we're going to move our carriage and our back uh, everything back that direction and we're going to come in with our radius cutter and just cut the radiuses. I mean, that's the easy way to go. First thing we have to do is, if you notice, I've got a three-foot rod. And we need to cut uh, whatever our lengths are here. And so we'll go ahead and do that. And we'll be back. All right. Well, we're looking at our piece here. And we're just going to get a general measurement of the circumference which is five oh, five ninety five eight seven five of course not a measurement at all or not a size at all just cause something random so well that's okay we can do that so we've got five Actually, now we're looking at 590 here. So 590, half of 590 would be two and a half and 45. So that's, uh, so that's um, <laughs> two and a half and 45, 295. So. 295 would be right there. So if we look here, see this little mark there? That's our dead center. We can bring this up to that mark and get that dead center. And then this is where we want to go to. So And I made this piece, oh, I don't know, probably two or three or four years ago. Um, I believe there's a video on it. And in the early days of my shop, before I had the floor in, before I had the uh, lathe over in this corner where it lives nowadays, uh, it was kind of out in the middle of the, of the barn. It was more like a barn back then. All right, so we've got that. Now what we want to do is we want to measure from this point over. And we're going to just do a simple eyeballing a little bit back. And I got just a piece of scrappy um, uh, all thread in here. Who cares? We're going to slide our, let me get a little oil on that, on those ways.
Get our shield out of the way. Okay. Get this baby right up. Ouch, where it belongs. We're going to have to take our carriage stop off. I can see that now. Okay, well, <clears throat> after an incredible amount of messing around yesterday, I realized, wait a second, I've got a tracer attachment. Why not use that? So uh, we went to uh, Photoshop. Uh, we took a picture of the, uh, of the rod. We went to Photoshop. We got it to the exact right size. We um, cut it out, or didn't cut it out, yeah, and then glued it to a base of of uh, copper or I mean brass and then I added that the extra amount to it which was 7 16 so that's going to make a 7 16 rod and all we have to do now is cut it out so that said let's get a saw and we're in the jewelry section as you know as you can tell uh, where I do finer uh, work. We'll get our big cheater glasses. We're going to come in pretty tight and start cutting. Alright, first thing we're going to do is uh, burn off that paper. Let's just do that and the, and the glue. And that's a pretty, pretty easy deal, no brainer. There we go. So,
I think that'll work. And then all we need to do is just put a little, uh, I mean, lead solder would be plenty. Plenty good enough. Good. Let's come up with some lead solder. Excellent. Ouch. Flip that around. Put this in. Somewhat like about there, maybe a little bit higher. Yeah. No flux. bit of heat and a tad of lead solder. And that should have it. So uh, now what we have to do is take it out and drill some holes in it so that we've got uh, bracket holes. We'll be All right well the thing is much too thin to mill so what I did is I put it in the uh, in the mill brought this the my center line or my shaft line down to the top of the vise made sure that was square struck a couple of lines out and uh, now what i'm going to do is just finish that line off by and that looks pretty good I'd say that's good. There's our full line. And that line goes even with this top line here. So then we get that and then we get our half circle. Which is all we need because we're spinning on the lathe. So now what I want to do is I want to measure from here down to a certain depth and cut a quarter inch hole. But first we're gonna put this one in and do the same thing. So this is this side and this is that side. Yeah. Okay, so we'll put it in over here. Can you see that? Yeah, you can. Okay. So then, I just kind of loosen this up a little bit. And get it down to where it's right or even with the surface. A little bit high in that hand. There we go. And then we can run a line here. 
and then put our scale in right here and bring that line out to this outer edge out here. And that should give us what we want. Yep. So, looking for that line. There it is. On both sides. All right, so we got our lines. Now, now we measure down. So we'll come down. Oh, I don't know, we could come down 300. just a little bit try that out one two three there's three there Okay, so that gives us our, our center line for the, our drill. And it can go anywhere along in here because I can So uh, our hole can go anywhere in here because our uh, mount is adjustable this way. So I think what we can do is go ahead and get, let's get a center punch and run a hole in there. There's one. There's one. Where's that one? There it is. And All right, so we'll go over to the drill press and just throw a pretty small hole in there just to kind of get a good pilot going, and then uh, we'll drill it out to quarter. Oh, wait a second. Hold it. Back up. Back up. I put the, I put the center punch in the wrong place. I put it up here. I need to put it down there. There we go. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Let's go over to the drill. Well, I didn't turn the camera on, so but we drilled our holes. And now we want to go to oversized holes. But first I need to measure the bolt. All right, let's go for this again. <clears throat> and because we're dealing with sharp edges here, we're going to put on a glove. Just because I know... Especially with brass, it's going to get away from me. But we're going to try. Nice sharp drill bit. And just barely pushing. Alright, we got a hole. Let's go for number two.
set squared up ready to go maybe we just uh, counter countersink these edges here so that uh, we don't have any rough stuff around the corners and uh, we're ready to rock and roll the uh, and this goes this way and that one goes that way and that creates our our total rod so uh, what we uh, what's going on right now is uh, I don't know if you noticed but it's still dark out it's uh, probably about five o'clock in the morning it's uh, middle of May and um, the Sun is about ready to just light up the day and it's time for me to go for a walk so uh, I'll be back in a couple of hours hour or two and uh, and we'll continue with this process Okay, we'll take off our other pattern, and I can't even remember what I was doing with that, but something, obviously. And uh, we'll put our current one in. So this is a big side. Looks like it's going to fit just fine. I was a little concerned about that. Come on. There we go. And then we want to take this off and we'll loosen it at the very least. <clears throat> and then bring it on over. Oops. A little too far. Okay, we won't worry about the rest of that for right now because uh, we need to get our cutter in place and uh, I'll get that set up. And okay, right. after hours of setup, we finally got this thing figured out. Uh, dialed in would be the key word. I, I know how it works. It's just dinking around with it. So, uh, so and basically what we're going to do is something similar to that. And that's one of our test pieces, of course. And we're just going to do it on the one end, and then uh, let's see how it goes. Yeah. 